this because it is important to have that perspective. I think. So what do you remember about dot products? Two vectors become a scalar. So number one, all right, dot product. Um, so what do you do here? You multiply, it's a product, right? So you multiply, what do you multiply? Two vectors. Two vectors. Let's say two vectors, A and B, just to give them names. And what else do you know? Results in scalar. The result is a scalar, correct. It's interesting, you multiply two vectors, but you don't get a vector as an answer. In fact, the dot product is also called the scalar product because the result is a scalar, not because you're multiplying two scalar quantities, you multiply two vectors, but the result is a scalar. Mm -hmm. And because the result is a scalar, it's just either a, a scalar quantity doesn't have direction associated with it, right? It's just a quantity that has a, you know, just a number associated with it. So um, a positive number, zero, or a negative number. So there's only one quantity to figure out, the value of the scalar. So what is that scalar? And the reason why it's called the dot product is because the symbol that is used to denote this type of vector multiplication is the dot, right? And so when you multiply these two vectors, you're just gonna get a number. How do you get that number? How do you get the value of that number? You multiply the magnitude of one of the vectors by the magnitude of the other vector and by the cosine of the smallest angle between those two vectors. So if this is vector A and this is vector B, theta is the smallest angle between them, and that's it. Okay? And when you calculate the dot product, the scalar product of two vectors, the two vectors do not have to be of the same type. This is different from when you multiply for, for when you add or subtract vectors. If you add two vectors, the two vectors must be of the same type. If you subtract two vectors, the two vectors must be of the same type. That is, by that I mean you can only add forces to forces. You can only add velocities to velocities. You can only subtract accelerations from accelerations. But you cannot subtract a force from a velocity, right? So when you add or subtract vectors, the two vectors must be of the same type, you know, having the same units. But when you multiply vectors, they do not have to be of the same type. We already applied the dot product when we calculated the work done by a force. And there we multiply, we multiply a force vector by a displacement vector. They have different units. They're not the same type of vector, but you can multiply them. Okay. Um, just to continue with this over here, how much is I dot I? I dot J. I dot K. What about J dot I? J dot J. J dot K. You know, unit vectors, right? And then K dot I. K dot J and k dot k. So what are these? How much is i hat dotted with i hat? i hat or the magnitude of i squared. Since so what do you get? What's the answer? One. One. Because it will be the magnitude of i hat, which is? One. One. Times the magnitude of i hat, which is? One. One times the cosine of the angle between them, cosine of zero is one. So one times one times one is zero. It's one, I'm sorry, it's one. How much is I dot J? Zero. Zero. Because the magnitude of I hat is one, the magnitude of J hat is one, but the angle between them is 90 degrees and the cosine of 90 degrees is gonna make that dot product zero, right? So this is zero, this is zero, this is one, this is zero, this is zero, zero, one. Okay, number two, the 
cross product. So here, what you do is you multiply two vectors. Wow, that's what we did over here too, right? We multiply two vectors. <coughs> But the difference is that now the result is a vector. It, in fact, it's a third vector. You, you multiply the two vectors, one and two, and you get a third vector. So you multiply, this is what I have in my notes at the beginning of this chapter, uh, you multiply two vectors, <clears throat> let's say A and B, uh, 